host, Evangelist Joel Torres. And so Jehoshaphat, I'm sorry for that little break, had a little technical uh, interruption rule <laughs> real quick. So any case, there were three nations coming after Judah and Jerusalem, okay? And so Jehoshaphat and all the inhabitants come out before the Lord. Now here's what I want to say. God will do it, but we also have to do our part. That's why I said in prayer, in fasting, and you know. So let me just say this. God is, uh, what happened with them, there was collaboration, wasn't there? They approached God and God interacted. He intervened. I want to encourage you to do your part by praying, interceding for this administration and for the president. So anyway, back to Jehoshaphat. So they came before the Lord and God intervened. So let's read it. Uh, it's found in 2 Chronicles 20, 20. And it says, Jehoshaphat regarding Judah and Jerusalem, all of the inhabitants came before the Lord and prayed for deliverance against the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. And the Lord answered them, all of the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. They rejoiced and praised the Lord, saying to them, the battle belongs to the Lord. So there was collaboration, wasn't there? Now we saw that in in uh, in um, Ezekiel. Uh, let's see what is that uh, where it says um, uh, verse twenty three. He says, "I will show the holiness." This is uh, out of a uh, different translation, but uh, since I have it here, uh, my great, I, I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned. Uh, among the nations, the name you have profaned among them, then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the sovereign Lord, when I show myself holy through you before their eyes, through you. So there is a, a place of collaboration. It's going to, it goes both ways. It just doesn't, God says, okay, I'm, the battle belongs to me. But in in this verse, in Second Chronicles, there's other verses also, but what it said is that God told Jehoshaphat and his, and his people to take a stand, to be ready, go to the place and meet the army. What happened is that God caused confusion among all three armies while they were camped on the other side of a ravine, and down below were the camps. And got through confusion that, that they ended up killing one another down to the last man. So Jehoshaphat and his men came standing ready and moving to be ready for battle regardless. And when they saw and they looked down the ravine, they saw all the armies of those three nations dead. Not one man was left. God fought the battle. We're going to pray. We need to pray and yet take a stand. We don't let our guards down. Amen. We do not let our guards We pray, we intercess, and we begin to fast. That's what we need to do. It's a collaborative effort. That's what it's saying. It's what it said in Ezekiel. I will show them through you. How is he going to show them through? Just sitting there? <laughs> no by the actions of the renewed heart that we have been given moving in a fresh new way amen see jehoshaphat and all the inhabitants begin to praise and worship the lord so we also need to worship and praise the lord why because then we come in a place of great assurance faith is the assurance of what we hope for. Then we come in that assurance of that faith. Faith giving us total access to God himself. It's time to step in faith. 
to give us the title deed of victory. When Jehoshaphat and his men got to there and looked over the ravine, they didn't have to lift one sword, not one man, but were able to plunder everything <laughs> that was there. Amen? So we have to do our part because if we don't, then it becomes conditional. I want it where it is assured victory. Where we are as a nation is brought into one nation under God. That's what we need to look at right now. Because if you think the Democrats and Biden's administration is going to do that, you're sadly mistaken for what they stand for. So, I'm giving my, I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm telling you what God is showing me and through the word. So let's move on. In Ephesians, the one thing that we lack is wisdom right now. And we lack the discernment. And Paul talks about us receiving the wisdom of God. And it's found in Ephesians 1, 17 through 23. And I'm going to read it out of the NIV. And it says, I keep asking the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. What Paul is saying in this verse is to know him better is to receive in the knowledge of God, which will give you the understanding through wisdom and revelation, which is insight into the mysteries and secrets and the deep intimate knowledge of God himself. See, it's a mystery and it's a secret to those who do not know God. There are many Christians that say, I'm a Christian, but they truly don't know God. They know the acts of God, but they don't know the ways of God. To know the ways of God is to have wisdom and revelation of his thoughts and his ways that are not like our thoughts and our ways. Are you understanding that? You see? <clears throat> By receiving this knowledge of him is that you will get to know him better. The benefit of this receiving is intelligent and discernment in Christ. That's what one, uh, I believe in the Amplified says that. That we will receive good intelligent uh, wisdom and discernment of Christ in Christ in verse 20 and 21 in the message Bible it says this God raised him from death and set him on the throne in deep heaven in charge of running the universe everything from galaxy to governments no name and no power exempt from this rule and not just for a time being but forever he is in charge of it all and has the final word on everything. Concerning everything that's happening right now with this election, God has the final word concerning everything of, uh, concerning this election. <laughs> Amen. So it does not matter what it looks like or what it seems like or what everybody says it is. Amen. After all, like in Job 5, 9, he's famous for great and unexpected acts. There's no end to his surprises. <laughs> God is going to disorient, disorient the, the enemy and they're going to begin to come against one another, destroying one another, blaming one another. God told me a long time ago that he was that they were going to be decimated. They're going because they believe their own lies, their own deception, and they've gone that deep that they will that they will they have fallen in their own traps. Okay? <clears throat> Cuz they're going to expose them, expose themselves to those things made in secret and in dark places. Their network of deception will be exposed. Those who rule over this nation, of those who rule over those nations, I'm sorry, will be exposed. 
okay, those who are running in the heart of corruption, okay, it will, it will take down the last two previous administrations. And that's what's going to happen. The global elites will be exposed and their network of lies and corruption will come into light. The repentance of the church is needed to bring restoration and revival in this nation. We are the ones that need, this is why God says, and it will be through you that they will see me. <laughs> so, it's that is that is the reason for the heart reset okay for revival for this nation there will not be a global reset but a heart reset for revival amen so let's not forget about the judgment to the church and the consequences there are going to be there needs to be repentance in job 17 and 18 it says, so what a blessing when God steps in and corrects you. Mind you, don't despise the discipline of the Almighty God. True, he wounds, but he also dresses the wound. The same hand that hurts you, heals you. For one, from one disaster after another, he delivers you. No matter what the calamity, the evil can't touch you. There will be a time of reprieve for the opportunity of repentance, okay? And to receive his mercy and restoration of your soul and spirit. So God is providing, is going to provide, is going to provide an opportunity. The consequences, some will suffer the consequences, but in the midst of that consequences, their hearts can change. And in the midst of it, God will take them out of it that no calamity or evil will be able to touch him. But there are consequences. Amen. So there's, there's a time of reprieve, even in the midst of consequences, there is a time of reprieve. So pray for those who are ignorant, those that you may know, family, friends, that are believers, in Christ that say they are believers but have fallen prey to the lies and fallen into the place of deception pray for them but don't be don't fear of the consequences they go through because God's in control of that too in that midst of that consequence God loves them God's a sovereign God and in that midst of that God will deliver them because he heals the wounds. <laughs> Amen. He corrects us. So even for us in this time to receive the reset of God's heart in us, there are things that God needs to expose in us and we need to be disciplined by him. So don't be shaken by it. Allow it so that you're in the position of surrendering everything to God so that you can get rid of the old wineskin to receive the new wine for your life. Amen. In verse 27, it says, Yes, this is the way things are. My word of honor, take it to heart, and you won't go wrong. <laughs> so remember that God loves you. He wants you to receive blessings that are coming to those who are righteous before him. God doesn't want anyone to miss out. He does not. Those who refuse, we pray that they repent. Because pride and stubbornness will not allow God to replace their heart, their stone of heart, into a heart of flesh. So let's pray for them. Keep them in prayer. God, let them see the truth. Open their hearts. Open their eyes so they may see. Let them have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. So we need to pray for our fellow believers as well. In verse 26, it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. 
I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Amen. We will dive in to the spiritual laws of God that creates the divine infrastructure of order. And so that will be for next broadcast. And also I have an interview coming up that will put a small announcement out there as I'm working on it and preparing it. But this today was something that God gave me. I wanted to share it with you. This is the beginning of Heart Reset for Revival. Thank you and God bless you. Welcome to this special edition of Word of Power. Uh, we are, I'm, as I've been talking about, we are stepping into uh, the segment of Heart Reset for Revival. And so we are here today at the residence of uh, Chico and Sally Holiday. And uh, hosting us alongside me is Reverend Mike Bearden. Mike, thanks for being here with me. My pleasure. And we'll be doing something later on to kind of tell you and fill you in what we're doing behind the scenes. But anyway, uh, this is a, a real privilege to be here. Chico um, was on his way up in in, uh, in the music industry, was a Vegas headliner, and transitioned to gospel and to the ministry from that. And so we're here today to hear their story of both him and Sally Holiday, and just kind of a perspective spiritually as to where the church is today, what they're what they're seeing today, and as ministers, their experiences as ministers and what else Mike? Oh, I'm excited. Uh, we had the privilege of speaking with them beforehand so we kind of know what's coming mm -hmm. but you're just gonna have to watch the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> 